Hi friends, today's statement sleeve will be the pagoda shoulder. The pagoda shoulder was invented by designer Pierre Cardin, but is more recognizable as seen on pop stars such as Lady Gaga. In fact, it might be because of Miss Gaga herself that I know how to make a pagoda shoulder because I happen to be someone who was backstage working on her tour way back in like 2010. A pagoda shoulder is a pointed shoulder. That's it. The pagoda shoulder is essentially a shoulder shape that has an exaggerated point. How exaggerated you wanna go is up to how extra you are. So what that would look like is something that goes like this, boink, and then the sleeve. I brought this over here just to demonstrate that. Okay, you can go now. Anyway, you'll need a few things before you begin. The basics would be the fabric that you wanna make your outfit in, a sewing machine, scissors, pins, any other thing that you might need on a regular sewing journey. But in addition, I would recommend getting some quilters batting or pillow stuffing, as well as have a pattern on hand that is a bodice and a sleeve. I'm gonna show you how to modify it. To begin, you'll modify your pattern by tracing it out onto tissue paper. When you reach the shoulder, I usually use two inches away from the neck before I start my curve upwards, creating the point. Simply draw it up as big as you want it and then draw it back down to meet the armhole. Now I'm just tracing out the rest of my pattern. So this is what you should have, something that looks similar to this. And I've also noted where the original top of the shoulder seam goes. That's useful for later. Using the same piece, I'm tracing what will now be the front part of the pattern. That way, each of the shoulder points are the same. Now I'm measuring how much of a point I have. This will help when we want to add that measurement to the top of our sleeve pattern. So I'm just matching that here. And now I draw that angle down to meet the rest of the sleeve. In watching me do this, I think it becomes apparently clear exactly what the process is. It's not as difficult as you would think. Voila! Now I'm making the piece that will be the stuffing for inside of the shoulder. So like essentially the shoulder pad, but it will be pointy. So I am tracing out the exact same shape. This is the top of my sleeve and I'm using some extra tissue paper. And I'm just creating a curve here that's simply uh, where the shoulder pad part will end. And now I'm tracing the front and back pieces, but since they're the same, we can use the same piece. To reiterate, the front and back pieces are the same, so you only need to trace one. This curve is, again, like the sleeve top, just indicates where the end of the shoulder pad goes. And now you want to cut them out. For the front and back pieces, you will need four, and for the sleeves, you'll need one. So here's all my pieces. I've got a back piece, I've got sleeves. You want two with sleeves, obviously. And for the front, you want two pieces of the front. You want four of the shoulder pad piece and two of the shoulder pad piece sleeve top. Next, cut the same amount of pieces out of your quilter's batting. And now we're going to make the under part of the shoulder pad piece where we're cutting it as if it was the normal pattern shape, so without the point. And again, you'll need four, so two fronts, two backs, and then two of the sleeve top. If you're confused at this point, it will all become clear as you watch this. But as you can see, that would be what an, a normal shoulder pad might look like. And as you can see, I've kind of overcut my curve here, so I'm just matching it with uh, the front and back tops here. So that's where the top of the sleeve is and the top of the arm. Okay, let's assemble. So this is pretty easy. You want to attach your front and back top of the shoulder seams and obviously it's a curved seam. And the trick here is to cut notches. If you don't, that that seam won't curve out and you won't get a point. It'll 
it'll pull and just look really kind of funky. So putting little snips in it, little notches will really help that. And then after I do this, I go back in and I uh, do a cover stitch on top of it. This is an optional thing, but I like to. So basically I'm just turning the seam allowance to one side or the other and stitching it down. And trim away any selvage. So do you see right now it's already kind of turning out to be a little curve shape. So this is the top of my sleeve. I'm going to match it with the top of the apex of the point there. And I'm going to stitch one side down and then the other. And I'm using a ponty knit so I can kind of stretch it a little bit. But most likely your sleeves and your armholes should match pretty nicely. Now I'm going back and doing the other side. So at the end of this stage, you should have the top of your sleeve sewn to the armhole. Now I'm just trimming out the apex of that point. If you don't trim out the fabric here, it'll bunch up when you try to turn it out and it won't work right. So as you can see here, I like to fold both sides back and then pop it through. Already your sleeve is taking shape. You can see right there, it's looking good. So now to put the sleeve together, I always start at the wrist and just drive all the way up and down the bodice side. Then I like to match the seams at the armpit as I go. Then you simply keep sewing down the bodice side. Now let's push this through and enjoy the satisfaction of a nice formed sleeve. So fashion, so fun, so pink, really pink. Ooh, so this is what it looks like without the shoulder pad. We're obviously going to need that because you need structure in there, otherwise it'll collapse on itself. So take your quilter's batting. You want to make sure the quilter's batting is on the outside of your fabric. And you repeat the same process of putting the shoulder tops together, putting the snips in, and I also like to cover stitch this because who doesn't like to look inside of a garment and see that it's been constructed just as well? With this particular piece, I sewn down both sides by opening the seam up and flaying it out and then doing a cover stitch on top. I'm trimming it away, and now I will attach it to the top of the shoulder piece as I did with the jacket. It's basically the same process, except for you have quilters batting to kind of get in your way. Now, if the curved ends that you cut don't quite match, that's totally okay. I'm lucky here that they did, but sometimes they're off slightly and that's fine. Remember, this is just the shoulder pad. And we'll get to that in a second when we construct the bottom part of the shoulder pad. And I'm using some bigger shears here to cut away that because it's a bit thick. It's hard to do with my snips. And I am gonna turn this out too. Turn it out, girl, turn it out satisfaction. Now you sew this together as you would sew a regular top of a shoulder, same as before, it just doesn't have a curve. And I'm also cover stitching it here, or top stitching. And I'm uh, putting on the top of my sleeve. And again, with no point, it can be a little difficult to figure out which side's what. So maybe you want to mark your sleeve top with a pin so you don't confuse it with the bottom that you've curved out. And so you can see here how the sleeve bottom is a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter. That gets trimmed out later. And now I am pinning the, uh, the smaller sleeve to the bigger pointed sleeve part of the shoulder pad. And the important part in this step is to leave a little gap because you're going to stuff it with the rest of your quilter's batting. And this creates a shoulder pad. So the reason why there's a smaller normal looking shoulder and then the big pointy shoulder is to allow a bit of space in between. So the inside shoulder part that seems a little bit more right, like a regular pattern will sit nicely against your, your shoulder. And then in between there and the point, there will be room for stuffing. That's why we're going through this whole mess. If you're in a pinch and you've made this for a night out of the club or whatever, you can literally just stuff your shoulders with like newspaper. 
<laughs> I've seen it done. It's not good for the long term or if you want to make something really, really, really uh, glamorous and a little bit more, you know, couture. But, you know, in a pinch, no one's going to know. Hey, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons. It's been two years, and without your support, I would not have been able to make these videos. And I look forward to making more with you in the future. To wrap this up, take your shoulder pad back to the machine and use a simple straight stitch to close that opening. What you don't see is that I take this to my overlock machine after this and surge around it so that it has a finished look. It isn't a raw edge. And now I put the shoulder pad in and it's very satisfying. In order to stitch your shoulder pads in, I stitch both sides to the inside armhole seam. That way that you don't have any stitches showing on the outside of your garment, but it's held in place. This concludes our beautiful pagoda shoulder tutorial. This is the finished look after I put in my facing pieces and the peplum on the skirt. This tutorial is such a game changer and will open up a door for a lot of costumes for you in the future. So have fun and happy crafting!